How's it going RK Squad? Today we are going to talk about what you guys should expect when going into architecture school. More specifically, we are going to talk about the subjects that you guys are going to encounter in architecture school. So I'm going to try my best to explain what those subjects are. So let's get into this folder thing. So the contents of this folder are my transcript of records or my grades, which I am not going to show you guys so as not to bring dishonor onto my family and my ancestors. So I'm just going to use this as a guide to see what subjects I had when I was in first year, second year, third year, fourth year, all the way to my fifth year grade. So let's put that aside for a while. But before we get into the subjects, I would just like to announce that I have a new channel. This new channel is called Oliver Austria. So in this channel, you guys are going to see me speak Tagalog because it's going to be mostly random videos. You guys could check it out in the link in the description and maybe I'll put it in a pinned comment down below. So go ahead and subscribe to that if you guys want to see me do some random crazy ass videos. Anyways, that's enough self-promotion. Let's get into what subjects I tackled in my first year. Okay, so for those of you who do not know, I went to St. Louis University in Baguio City, which is located in the Philippines. So this curriculum may not be applicable to people outside the Philippines. But for people in the Philippines, this curriculum will be more or less the same to other universities. With that being said, let us begin. So my first semester, I had Architectural Design 1. So in Architectural Design 1, the main theme is just teaching us how to design, like the basics of design and, you know, mainly the standards of design, like what's the height of a door and all those sorts of standards. So yeah, Architectural Design 1, this is also where they taught us how to draft our drawings. So they taught us the line weights and how to make our title blocks and maybe how to use the tech pens and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what we did in Architectural Design 1. So the next subject after that is called Visual Techniques 1. So as the name implies, it teaches us some visual techniques. So the name sounds super cool. It's like some sort of Sharingan visual technique. But actually, it's a little bit less exciting, but still exciting. So in Visual Techniques 1, this is where we tackle our rendering skills. So this is where they taught us how to use watercolor, how to use pen to render drawings, and how to use pencils. So basically, Visual Techniques 1 teaches us how to improve our drawing skills. So yeah, there we go. Next, we have Graphics 1. So Graphics 1 mainly tackles architectural drafting. So this is where they taught us how to use our drafting tools properly. They also taught us some line weights right here. So I know it's a little bit redundant. They already taught us line weights in Architectural Design 1, then they taught us again in Graphics 1. But redundancy is good when you are first year because the more redundant things become, the easier it it goes into your brain so yeah they taught us the line weights how to draw various shapes like ellipses and also how to do perspectives like isometric two point three point and one point next subject on my list is theory of architecture so this is where they taught us bunch of theories they taught us the theory of color the theory of um, opposites you know how if one material exists there must be an opposite to balance it stuff like that the theory of light and shadows and you know all those stuff will be taught in that subject, theory of architecture. Then here comes the scary part. I have descriptive geometry. For those of you wondering if you must be good at math in order to become an architect, uh, you have to be somewhat decent at math because we have pretty good selection of math subjects when we were in first year. So our first math subject was descriptive geometry. Uh, and then we have college algebra, which is uh, somewhat hard. And then we have plain trigonometry, which to be honest, I, I struggled a bit. I barely passed this subject because I don't know, I wasn't listening. I was probably daydreaming during the classes. And then we have all other random subjects like Filipino, physical fitness and uh, some religion thingy. And then we had communication arts, which is basically an English subject to teach us English. So yeah, that's how I got good with my English language. I can't even talk with dang it man okay so that is my first year so for my second year we still continued with the architectural design so we still have that the only difference between the first year architectural design and the second year architectural design is that we were leveling up in the difficulty of our project so if we were designing residential houses in architectural design one so for the second year architectural design we are going to be designing much more complicated stuff so instead of residential houses, we'll probably be designing residential buildings like condominiums, hotels, and the like. And maybe they'll throw in a couple of weird scenarios like restaurants and you know, pretty basic stuff still. So we still have that. 
Then we have visual techniques. So for this one, we were tackling poster colors, if my memory was correct. And then some advanced water coloring techniques. And then there is a new subject during our second year, which is Building Technology 1. Basically, Building Technology 1 is where they teach us detailing and stuff like that. So how are the connections for the trusses? They taught us a bunch of wooden connections and all those details. So that's what I remember Building Technology 1 was all about. And then we have History of Architecture 1. So this is probably one of the hardest subjects for me because whenever I get bored, I just seem to forget all the stuff. So for History of Architecture 1, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory taught us the history of architecture so who are the architects like Frank Lloyd Wright uh, Anthony Gaudi and their work so we studied those stuff and then next we have planning one again pretty self-explanatory this is where they teach us how to plan stuff so as we progress through the years planning one planning two and then planning whatever the last planning we had um, we are going to progress from planning residential houses and then into planning airports, hospitals, and eventually urban planning, stuff like that. So yeah, so after planning one, we still had analytic geometry. Those were my subjects when I was in second year. Okay guys, before we proceed to my third year, I just wanna be honest with you guys and tell you that I did not graduate in five years, which is the regular amount of years you're supposed to graduate in architecture. Unfortunately for me, I was a very lazy boy <laughs> back then and uh, I didn't pay attention to some of my subjects and I maybe dropped a couple of subjects. So yeah, I dropped a couple of subjects and failed some mathematical subjects, but you know, hey. In the end, I still graduated, so for those of you guys who are failing right now, do not be discouraged by your failures. failures are not permanent those are just challenges so every time you fall down you need to pick yourself up because failures make you stronger my dude so yeah that's just a message from one failure to another not that you guys are all failures just some of you guys who are experiencing failures and are being pressured into succeeding yeah eventually with enough hard work perseverance and big brainedness you guys will be able to succeed and you know, graduate architecture and become an architect just like me. So yeah, let us proceed. So for my third year, I got Building Technology 3, which again is one of those detailing things. And I believe Building Technology 3 is where they taught us metal details, like the detailing of how to connect trusses, gusset plates, and stuff like that. So for every major architecture subject, we mostly had drafting subjects that are three to four hours long. So we had one hour for lecture, and then we had three to four hours of drafting for that subject. So yeah, I forgot to mention this a while ago. For the subjects like architectural interiors, architectural design, visual techniques, graphics, and building technology, we all had one hour for lecture and three to four hours for drafting for those major subjects. Next, we have the subject building utilities. So building utilities, basically they're going to teach you a bunch of stuff about the plumbing systems, HVAC systems, which are basically the mechanical systems of your building. And then they're going to teach you a bunch of electrical systems. So yeah, those are the things that I remember. Probably should have refreshed myself on these subjects before I did this video, but you know, it's too late, we're already doing it, so might as well just wing it okay and then we have elementary surveying so it's not that we are going to go to an elementary school and ask children about a bunch of stuff i know it sounds like that but we didn't do that this is basically basic surveying i don't know why they used the name elementary so they taught us how to use the surveying machine thing the surveying transit and i can't even remember what it's called anymore so they taught us how to survey the lot so the purpose of this subject is so that we can communicate properly with surveyors or with those engineers that do the survey mainly those are some of the reasons why we have a bunch of random subjects so an architect must be a jack of all trades and master of at least two things drawing and uh persuasiveness maybe because you need to talk to clients <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying man okay next again i have analytic geometry and college physics so you also need to know physics for architecture so that you don't create physically impossible buildings we also had differential and integral calculus so again another math subject so yeah, you need to be a little bit decent with math so that you don't struggle with architecture school. I don't know how many times I have to answer that question in the comments, but a ton of you guys were wondering. So yeah, you need to know math at least on a mediocre level. Let us move on. So for my fourth year, we still had history of architecture 
And then we had professional practice one. So for professional practice one, this is where they teach you a bunch of stuff about the ethics of how you conduct yourself in the architecture world. Like how to talk to clients, how to acquire clients professionally and legally because there's illegal ways to get clients. And this is also where they teach you the ethics of the practice of architecture. So they teach you what to do and what not to do in certain professional situations. And then of course, we still had architectural design. So architectural design is one of those subjects that you are going to experience from your first year until you graduate. And then of course, we still have building utilities and building technology. And then we have magnetism, electricity, and light optics. This is physics version two. So they taught us about all those stuff. I know physics is in the branch of science, but most of the things we did in physics were math. So it's like a trap. You thought you were gonna do some amazing physics, science, scientist stuff, but surprise, mathematics, man. It just hit you in the butt like let us move on we had tropical design so for us living here in the philippines tropical design is very important since the philippines is a tropical country most of the things we tackle in tropical design are about the sun paths here in the tropics where the wind comes from and basically sustainable design so yeah that's what we tackled in tropical design and of course we still had architectural design and then history of architecture was still present and then we had specialization one so specialization one is a subject where they teach you various branches to which you could branch out as an architect so most architects do not necessarily enter the field of architecture when they graduate some of them enter the field of animation some go to the field of fashion design and some even become youtubers i wonder who that is can't keep a straight face with that one uh so specialization one is where they lead you into a journey of what lies beneath the horizon of architecture so basically they widen your horizons to what professional fields you can enter. And then for my summer classes, I took Strength of Materials. Strength of Materials is a subject where they teach you how to compute, how much bearing load can a certain concrete column carry. Very boring, I didn't pay attention, but still I got a 92. I don't know how that happened. And then next we had technical writing where they taught us how to write specifications and how to construct sentences in a logical manner in which other people who read it could understand. So as an architect, you must know how to convey your words without having to speak to that person. You have to convey it through a drawing with a bunch of call outs and paragraphs and descriptions. So those descriptions must be legible to the contractor who is reading it or to whoever you gave your plans to. So that's the reason why we have technical writing. Let us move on. Okay, so this is my fifth year. So supposedly this year, I'm already supposed to graduate, but due to my dropped subjects and failed subjects. Damn you, theology! <laughs> Fifth year, first semester, we had steel, timber, and concrete design. So that subject, again, is pretty self-explanatory. They teach you how to design using steel, timber, and concrete. Here comes a new subject, architectural structures. So in this subject, they taught us the various structural configurations of certain buildings and how we could apply it onto our work so that's what we did there okay let us move on to my sixth year so for my sixth year i only had a few subjects i only had like four so for this one i had architectural interiors so architectural interiors is where they teach you how to properly design the interior spaces of your buildings so the next subject i had when i was in my sixth year is housing and human settlement. So I don't know how to explain this further. That's a pretty self-explanatory name. Okay, let us move on to the next semester. So for the next semester, we had research methods for architecture. This is basically where they teach us how to research for our thesis that is going to come in our last year, which is my seventh year. And then we had humanities, which is where we do a bunch of singing and dancing. I don't know what that has to do with humanities, but yeah, that's what we did in that subject. We created a band, we made a song, and then we also danced in the school production. I know it's a little bit weird for you guys who do not live in the Philippines, but here in the Philippines, that's a pretty common occurrence to insert dancing and singing into your school life. Okay, let us move on to my final year, which is my fifth year. So for my fifth year, we had architectural seminars. This is where they taught us how to basically present ourselves to a ton of people. So basically this is like, uh, what you call that? Public speaking, yeah. 
So it's a, it's a non-scary way to say public speaking. So basically that's what the subject is. And then we have comprehensive course module one, two, and three. So these subjects are where they recap a bunch of stuff that we learned from when we were in first year. And then we have architectural design nine, which is the beginning of our thesis year. So this is where we conduct all the research and all that stuff and where we do preliminary designs, you know, going to the lot and investigating stuff. And this is also where we propose our design problem and our thesis title. So that's a pretty stressful year for me. Let us move on to my final semester of my final year. So the only subject I had back then was architectural design 10, which is the culmination of all the years that I've spent in architecture school. It all led to this final subject in which I am going to present and finalize my architectural thesis. So a ton of you guys are asking in the comments down below for tips in coming up with thesis topics and thesis titles. So one of the things I have learned pretty late when doing the thesis was the first thing you gotta do is you got to determine a problem. And in order to determine a problem, you need to walk around the city or the vicinity of which you want to conduct your thesis on. So for example, you want to conduct your thesis in the city. So what you got to do is you got to walk around the city and determine what the city needs and what are the problems in the city. So for example, you see a ton of children playing around in the street and there's a ton of cars zipping by and it's a little bit unsafe because one of the children might accidentally get hit by a car, stuff like that. All you got to do is determine the problem. So the problem is the unsafeness of that location. And then you got to come up with a solution. So the solution is going to be your thesis topic. So right off the top of my head, the solution is to create a safer park for those children and maybe throw in a couple of zingy architectural words like hyper sustainable or biomimicry, you know, stuff like that. So hyper sustainable, biomimicry, children's playground that is ultra safe. And maybe you can just slim it down to ultra safe, hyper sustainable children's playground. I know that topic sounds ultra stupid, but I can't come up with any better topics right now. I need to go out to the city and get some architectural inspiration. <laughs> okay, anyways, that is the end of my transcript of records. And that is all the subjects that I took when I was in architecture school. So hopefully I gave you guys some insight into what you guys are going to encounter when you get into this wild world of architecture. And I hope I inspired you guys to not give up when things are getting hard. Anyways, guys, all I'm gonna say is don't give up. You guys can do this. And I will see you guys on my next architectural video. Don't forget to subscribe to my other channel for crazy non-architectural stuff. Maybe, I don't know, just, you know, subscribe. It will make me so much happiness. Anyways, I will see you guys on my next video. Thank you for watching. Flying peace.